Hello and welcome Tea Time Lovers to another edition of Tea Time Roundup where I bring to you the summary of juicy stories that you might have missed from the biggest entertainment stories of the week that made it to Tea Time. Of course, see, I got you. I am Ife Omai. Starting off, we have Tonto Adike who louds FG over various youth development programs. And you would be very surprised at how much money and resources have been delegated to the youth. And I'm talking millions you will never know if it's audio until we check it out so please watch out for that we also have Omotola Jalade, Ekeinde, Tony Abraham and Osas Igodaro to name a few that have joined in the hashtag save cinemas online protest that urges for the reopening of cinemas and I am with them to be honest with, with you on this tag because ugh, I want to go and watch a movie I don't know about you and you know we are big when, you know you are big when less than one minute video of you goes viral and becomes a hot topic, just, just cause. Well, this video in topic contains the hottest thing right now, which is the African giant, Brenner Boy, who is seen chilling in London with a few others, including Whiskey Baba himself. And the only words we could get from this video was Brenner Boy telling Wiz that he has nothing more to prove. And of course, the world goes wild and we are here to decipher what that means. So take a look. For the benefit of the youth of Nigeria is the special assistant, ICT and corporate relations to Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Uluwa Kemi and Melody. Hello, Kemi. Good evening. How are we? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. Okay, so just like um, Tonto DK, I, I, I hope I won't be wrong when I say I think most of us do not... Um, know of these platforms that she's talking about. And you're working close to um, the ministry that is very um, interested in this area. Can you help us highlight some of these platforms for the um, knowledge of those watching? Okay, awesome. Um, yes, since uh, this particular honorable minister has taken up office, the ministry has been involved in a lot of initiatives for the Nigerian youth. Um, the minister, first of all, started with the DEAL, D-E-E-L, which stands for Digital Skills uh, um, Acquisition, um, Employability, Entrepreneurship, and Leadership Skills. Um, we're trying to ensure that every Nigerian youth um, has a better advantage with these, uh, um, for, within these four areas. So under the Digital Skills Acquisition, um, the ministry has started a number of programs, uh, one of which is the... We're currently doing a 60-day app challenge. So for the 60-day app challenge, Here's what I found on the um, we've got a number of um, young people that are involved in the app challenge in, in various industries. Um, they stand to win cash prizes, training prizes, and, and a lot more. Um, over the COVID-19 pandemic period, lockdown period, we're able to train uh, under about under 20,000 Nigerian youth in um, digital skills with uh, our partnership with IBM. Um, we have partnerships ongoing with Google and Microsoft. Um, we're just working out modalities, and that will also include training for Nigerian youth. So first and foremost, we want to ensure that in the digital area, most Nigerian youth are, are, are trained to, to the level that they need to be. Then we've looked at employability. Employability is for... Um, the area of ensuring that every Nigerian youth is employable. So it's um, it's not just about having a degree or having a certification. It's also about having the workplace desired skills. So workplace desired skills, um, for, in, in order to ensure that we get that done properly, we've come up with a work experience program. The work experience program um, gets the young people teamed up with uh, various organizations. So they go into the organizations and uh, do a work placement there for three months where a stipend is paid by the ministry to cover uh, basic logistic costs. So the companies don't take any responsibility for uh, um, any costs. So that is more of an incentive for them to take up a number of Nigerian youth to join them in their organizations for them to literally, you know, as we call it, get their leg in the door. And then when you get in there, you exhibit qualities that are, uh, uh, um, the employers are looking for, and there is a possibility of them retaining you with a, a job uh, placement. We also have entrepreneurship. For entrepreneurship, uh, that's, you know, I, I think that's kind of our key one at the moment because there are so many loans and schemes available for entrepreneurs. We're trying to ensure that most ideas that come to the ministry, once we get hold of them, we're able to 
to right. assist in both giving the, the training required and the financial backing required mm -hmm. to ensure that these MSMEs are able to scale up and obviously employ more Nigerian youth. So thank you. Um, thank in you the for leadership, that. yes, you, thank you, you, for you that. can't it's, it's... be, as every single ind individual, right. your leadership qualities determine how far you will go in life. Of so course. it's key it's... that we ensure that every Nigerian youth has good leadership, leadership qualities. Did you want to say something there? Yeah, sorry. I, I, it sounds quite a lot, and I'm already impressed by everything. Just because of time, I want to be able to jump, um, throw some questions in. Obviously, everything is unarguably good, and we need that in the country. But I don't know if you are of the same um, idea, uh, ideology as someone like Tonto DK, who's saying that the reason why we are not finding... Because I'm a youth, and I don't know about this, and there's quite a lot of people like me on, this, on the table, I'm pretty sure. So... Is it that, are you agreeing with that statement that it's because of fake news and we're not really pushing that out? And if, if so, what can, what can be done that this type of information is disseminated to the people who really need it? Because it seems like this, this amazing initiative is not being circulated at all. Well, uh, may I say I beg to differ. The ministry are doing their part. We're doing our part to ensure that the information is out there. I don't know if you've heard about the ENIF which is the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund that was approved by the Federal Executive Council a few weeks ago um, for 75 billion Naira to invest in youth-owned businesses, youth-owned ideas. Um, I believe that, that that's all over the media at the moment. The only uh, fake news is, you know, you've got a couple of people putting up portals saying uh, you can apply through this portal, which we, our portal has not opened yet, so you can't apply yet. Um, there is a lot of information out there, but the onus is on you as a young person to search for it. Mm. Because if you do visit the ministry's Twitter, you'll find information there. The ministry's Facebook, the ministry's website. We do have a new website that is strictly for Nigerian youth opportunities, as well as it's an aggregator website. So mm. opportunities, scholarships, funding, you know, name it, anything for the Nigerian youth. It's Amazing. available there, and it's just Noya.ng. So uh, at the moment, we're trying to get every Nigerian youth to register on Noya.ng so they don't miss out on, on all these opportunities that are being rolled out. Yeah, we need to save a lot of things. We need to what? So there's a lot of things we need to save, mm. isn't it? Uh, so safety, that's the problem. It's the same conversation. I do think that the cinemas could open, though. And you could do like you know half the half the pop what's that word? They when they, there's a term they usually use when they want to break down the size and say half capacity. Ca half capacity. There yeah. we go. Yeah. So I feel like they could do something like that. I know I read somewhere where they were saying that because it's confined and it's usually cold, it's easy for the virus to you know spread a lot more. But I feel first like and foremost, they're not supposed to allow you in when you're coughing or sneezing or you're. Yeah, but what if you're fine and then got and then, a sickly cough inside them? And then I think we also discussed So that cannot happen table. in church. There are churches that are cold. Mm -hmm. I think we also Trisha. discussed it on this table where we said um, that you can buy tickets online. You, there shouldn't be tickets over the counter mm. anymore. You get so... No popcorn, if it's, no drinks. Yeah, no popcorn, no You're not having any interaction. They're just checking temperatures. And then there's spacing. You have sit numbers. There are ways to mm. go about popcorn, this thing. No drink. It's okay, guy. You carry a from home if you're doing it. Like hot that. dog. <laughs> <laughs> the food is very important. Because that is what I go for hot dog yeah, and milkshake. No, I feel like you're doing contact where they are exchanging money. I I'll wear glove. Just open the cinema, we'll be fine. We okay. cannot die. <laughs> no, I think there are ways, there are ways to put um, prevention, um, pre precautionary measures in place. And mm -hmm. um, like most churches are doing, we have the automated um, sanitation stuff. So mm -hmm. before going into the cinema, why, that's the investment. Maybe into you can the, wear your face mask while you're watching the movie. Yeah, that yeah, should be part of the should, rules. Yeah. And that is part of the investment in this sector that we're talking about, the entertainment sector. Now, we have people, investors that can easily put in place this automated um what's it called now Sanit sanitation stuff mm. but they're not going to do it because they feel so assuming the money was there we only so just five percent that you want to start taxing us for we didn't uh, be I part of like the, the private things like this in place the cinemas. most cinemas in this country are not owned by the government i feel like the private owners themselves can put automated Sanity, come on. Like, how much is that? does that thing actually cost? That's well, I think, I think that they the owners of the invest. cinemas are ready to put whatever measures um, necessary to ensure that 
um, they at least try to cop the virus. Mm. I mean, I, if churches can open, if clubs can open, I mean, what are you yeah. talking about? Mm. So I think it's off the back of that that um, this protest is going on. It's not because they just woke up and they felt like they're talking, they need to mm. talk. You said restaurants can open, clubs can open, churches can open. So why yes. can't a cinema why can't open? a cinema open? Which is what they are trying to say. It's not like they don't understand I'm that sure there's a virus open, so. or anything. So in my head, I'm thinking that there's probably an oversight whereby there were representative for of every arm um, in that um mm. tax force or whatever they like to call themselves but nobody was representing the cinema so they kind of um forgot the, about, about their yeah. existence so, this so is like MB, maybe they should before. yeah mm. so maybe they should try to speak to the um people making the decisions it shouldn't be difficult for someone like um if I was or Imo Abudu or someone to be able to get to someone in the government to understand I mean, why. I mean, already been dealing with their money. <laughs> <laughs> it would be difficult for them to have a conversation to yeah. understand why um, it was omitted because I want to see that om omission. Because mm. if all these other things are, can be allowed to open, I don't see any reason. I think it still boils down to the open. fact that they don't take the entertainment sector seriously mm. they still look at it like it's something that we can do without but they need to know that it's bringing in a lot of revenue it's putting a lot of food on it's like putting I, food yeah. on a lot of people's yeah. tables i can imagine what it's that. like for so, people who are there. earning from here like you haven't earned in a while because mm. of that so i think it's something it's not too too far-fetched for them to ask the government to please look into that I'm hoping that the next briefing by Lagos State government will definitely um, include, the include them. Mm, yeah. I think it will. I mean, if international flights, we are looking at opening soon. So that really I mean, freaks me out. But one, sure, give us our cinemas back. Save the cinemas. <laughs> Thank you. Numbers. Corner boy has passed whiskey. Currently, sorry, Sam. I forgot that you are here. It's a mistake. <laughs> I just, I think, I think if you say currently, like in terms Cor of, yeah, what has whiskey bagged this year in terms of accolades? Anything? Just give me Everything one thing. Everything Boy has bagged in terms of. I'm saying this year, well, currently. That's what we're talking about. Okay. If it comes maybe, maybe just this year. Because if it's I'm not about this year, obviously his statement is right, and he also has already said that that he has proven to us that he mm -hmm. is a. Quote unquote giant. I'm going to borrow uh, Burner Boy's uh, um, accolades now. Well, the nobody's, or the giants? <laughs> nobody's disputing the fact that um, Whiskey. Whiskey is one of the best things that he's have talented, come out of somebody. Africa. That's not the point. We're just saying, as of the moment that we speak on, how do I explain? You know, when, when you in like the boxing room where somebody gets the championship, or whatever. It's not just about you owning that belt. You have to keep on defend playing it. once in a Yes, that's the word, to defend it. I don't think Whiskey is doing a very good job in defending that title personally. But if, if we, with Burner Boy's statement, as the story is, yeah, he said, he said everything. He said what he said. Yeah, period. Period. he said, and that's correct. But my God, you, you know, it's, 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 it's okay. It's okay to say things like that, yeah? Because, um, <laughs> you, you, because you guys always give us a chance to always brag, you understand? Mm. Like a lot, I'm going I'm to have to bring football into this. I don't watch football. I don't know a lot about, bring in football, about football. Let's see what he's bringing. But okay. I know as no one... Um, FA Cup. FA Cup recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are going gaga. Everybody's saying, people are like, ah, your shelf has been dusty. Now you have it. But they have it, right? Mm -hmm. And it would always be part of their story that they mm -hmm. won their cup. No matter what you do, you can't take that away. So where I'm going with this is that... They've won so many FA Cups anyway. People kept on dragging them until they had to win this one again. Well, what I'm, where I'm going to with this is that, mm -hmm. look, the fact that right now we're probably, our shelf is probably dusty doesn't mean that what we have in there is the, still there. Yeah. But did you, you hear when she talked but, about kind of defending your belt? Yeah, yeah, that, that's what it. I'm getting to. And defending it now, I think with the level or with the standard of singles that he has put out this year, for me, it's still doing a very good job. For me, I that's why I said. I smile, though. Her smile. I yeah, love it. Yeah, it's still doing a very good job. And then when you're talking about what... It's not just about awards now. That's when the only time you're winning music. Thank you. Let's talk about songs, please. What's great about the songs that he has been dropping lately? That's why he said to me. Because that's even worse. It's not your I type feel like of music. his digitals you can brag on because it's whiskey. As long as that name I mean, is there, talking you about do well in terms of pushing and awards and all that. I don't even care about that. You know that. what? You're going I'm to talking talking about global streams. Talk about I'm talking about global stream. I'm sorry to confess that I've gone to club. But yeah, recent club experience. When? Hold on. Oh, wow. Before you hear whiskey's song come up, Eh? You've heard like a Bonner boy. You've yeah. heard Kiss Daniel. You've heard a David Doe. I, I was looking at something, I, I think it was early this morning when I saw the top three artists in Nigeria. They're actually Bonner boy, Kiss Daniel, and I need to remember the third person now. David Doe? I think it was David Doe. 
So, and this is based on streams and what is going on currently at the moment. So, nobody is arguing the fact that Whiskey is, I can use the word legend, if that will make yeah. you happy. Like, he is big. We love him. But he needs to he get is the into the that studio. They're trying to meet. Not anymore, fam. I disagree. <laughs> I really disagree. I think okay. his sound is very old. Now, you cannot say that Burner Boy sound is trying to meet... It has met him, it has left uh -uh. Whiskey. It's going somewhere else, fam. Burner Boy, the one thing you cannot take away from Burner Boy is that he brings a new vibe that we haven't seen before. One thing a lot of people you can't do, say that do not understand to is Jorah, that Whiskey, what was, what, Whiskey has never sold you lyrics. That's what really? you know. Whiskey has never, ever, ever did sold you. Did you ever listen to that album? Did you listen to that with Whiskey at Whiskey all? Whiskey never, ever sold us What's that song that actually gave him a lot of recognition now? Please remind oh, uh, me. Uh, Ojo Elegba, you saying you did not sell lyrics? lyrics. It, what lyrics? You want to compare Ojo Elegba's lyrics to Joe? I am giving time for life. Did you listen to that song? Wow. I can't explain. You know what I'm saying? There's no story in that song. There's Whis no lyrics not, in that I'm song. I'm not talking about story now. I'm telling you that we still selling points. Thank you for staying tuned. Kaisha came to the studio and we had a chat with with her, Ife Oshunke actually had a chat with her, and I have to say she's such a pleasant girl. And although some I miss not, you know, watching her in the house, I think she will still be a delight to follow even outside of the house. We also had the winners of our social media competition that we mentioned a few weeks ago, who came on the show and blessed us with their talent. And I have to say, this ta this country actually has talent. A big, take a look. For me, Big Brother Nigeria is for someone to show themselves. Like it's a reality show, you don't necessarily have to go there and do stupid things. Mm. You can't be decent. So that's why I would say a lot of people like feel like it's not a place for a house girl to be. Mm. Do you understand? And I just really want to prove them wrong that that is really wrong. Anybody can be there and still be decent. So that mindset of his is absolutely wrong. All right. So, so yeah. Still on this decency thing, did you think, do you feel like it affected your chances of winning? Do you think, you, do you wish you were more loose than you were? No, hold on. Like, when you say decent, 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 I'm decent. You know, yeah. But then again, that does not mean that I'm not outgoing. I'm not, um, um, I've not had life. I've not seen things. No. Mm, I have, okay. But still yet, I'm still decent. We'll find out about that <laughs> with this next so, question. Yeah. Because did you want more with Neo than friendship? No, not at all. I didn't go into the house to like couple up with anybody or to like look for a relationship. No, mm. I went there to be myself, to win the grand prize, to come out as a winner and then to follow up with my business. I didn't have any intention of going there to like couple up with anybody. So that's no okay, for me. But if it had happened, if Neil <laughs> had really gone all out and you know, really wanted you, would we have seen another side to Kaisha? Would you have been all booed up and stuff? I'm not going to say anything about that right now because I don't know. So Neil didn't push, so we can't talk about that. Okay, so okay, yeah. people want to know about your love life. Like, do you, <laughs> are you the type that is very soft when it comes to your relationship, or you're the strict type? Like, no, we can't do this now until marriage. We can't talk about this until marriage and all of that. Not at all. I, I like to have fun to the fullest. Mm. Like I said, this life is one, and you don't really want to like just be limiting yourself. Mm -hmm. You just need to do things and explore. That is me. I am adventurous, like you read earlier mm -hmm. on. I like to have fun. I like to like open up and enjoy life to the fullest. So when it comes to my relationship, I think I've been doing the most. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. But okay. then again, that does not limit me being God-fearing and putting things right at the right time. So, yeah. All right. So since we have to have fun and not limit <laughs> ourselves, right, let's play a quick game of never have I ever. Hey, God. <laughs> mm. okay. Are you ready? I'm ready, but let the questions be actually modest. Okay. So never have I ever bragged about something I haven't done before. Well, what, what should be my answer, please? Tell us I've, whether you have or you haven't. Hmm. I don't really want to lie. <laughs> yeah, so just be honest. <laughs> okay, so um, I think I have bragged about something. Which is, tell us, tell us. You're <laughs> spilling, it's tea time. You have to spill tea, come on. But a lot of things. So right now I can't really pick one or say anything. So let's just keep that and get on to the next question. Okay, so never have I ever stalked an ex-boyfriend on social media. Um, I have done that before. Yeah, once. Mm. Yeah. 
Never have I lied in this game. What game? This because game we just played. This game. No, I've not lied. I've not lied. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go on. Yeah. If you could go back to the house right now, what would you do differently? I am not going to change anything about myself because I told them before going in that I'm going to be myself 100% Kaisha and nothing but Kaisha. So there is nothing to change about me, just that they might see more of another side of Kaisha. So that's it. But that is still me regardless. So yeah. The last party, I think you were beginning to enjoy <laughs> Kaisha because you danced your heart out. Yeah. Now, was that something trying to impress or impress the viewers or Big Brother that, oh, I can be as free like all these other girls or that was just you having fun? That's just me having fun. I come from a house where we always like have fun. We dance at home. We just have fun every single time. Like even right now, my mom and my sister, my cousins, we are all together right now. We have been enjoying ourselves. So that's the kind of home I came from. I came from love. I came from happiness. We dance, my course, like any kind of dance from day one. Like growing up, I've been dancing, seeing my uncle and everybody dancing. So I really know how to dance to some point. So that's just me being myself. Yeah. All oh, right. And it's yeah. been amazing having this chat with you, Kaisha. Yeah. And then we will be dancing behind the scene when the camera goes <laughs> off. All right. All right. <laughs> Very simple. Uh, for example, I did a song at um, the song that got me the award, which I've not recorded in like six, five or six years now. I'm just mm -hmm. recording it for this um, album, Miss King again, and the song is titled "Indivisible." It's a patriotic song. Mm -hmm. You won't. It won't sound like your regular gospel song. Um, it was. I think it was one of the reasons why um, uh, Timmy Dakolo was sort of fond of me a little because it was patriotic, it was about mm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I can do that, but to you it sounds gospel mm. until you listen to the lyrics. Mm. So that, I believe that's what makes gospel music gospel, is the lyrics. So that's the niche you're carving out for yeah, yourself. Yeah. That's what makes you sound different from every yeah, other yeah, gospel yeah. artist. Mm. Yeah. What are you I mean. hoping to achieve with you know pushing your music out there and recording with the album coming? Like, What is your vision for all of that effort? Uh, well. To put, just, just to make it simple, very simple, um, I think it's just to get people to realize that, um, uh, how do I put this? There's church music and there's gospel music. To make people realize, hey, this gospel music isn't that boring, really. So there's church music and yeah, there's Yeah, you know, there's this church music. music. Once you What's hear, like, a very crazy sound in the beginning, there's a lot of drums and mm. rolls, and there's this piano going everywhere, everywhere. So that's everywhere. church mm. music. You're like, okay, we know it's church. Like, we get it, you mm. know? Mm. But then you, don't, you want to hear a song like... Um, uh, Loved by You, Snoop Dogg, Mali Music, you know, and you're like, is that gospel? Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're thinking in your head, is then that really lyrics gospel? Yeah. Actually yeah. But then it. the lyrics actually defines it, which is why I like um, Chiki's album, um, mm. Bow of the Bullets. It's clean, it's not like it's gospel, but it's clean. It's something anybody will listen to, yeah. Mm. So, I that's think what that I, one that song that that way is I Look to You with Nick Houston. Mm. So, yeah. you can decide to, mm -hmm. it's, it depends on how you want to interpret yeah, it Yeah, I was even surprised with yeah. Simi's Duduke. Mm. And what was happening mm -hmm. on social media, like, those um, churches and celeb people doing the old mm -hmm. Duduke. What about like, Teshimole? Exactly. <laughs> okay, so when is your album <laughs> dropping and um, what do we expect from you going forward? Um, album should be dropping, uh, just a lot of pressure. I, it's my first album, so I, did, nice. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of work. Okay. Yeah, because there was, the, the way they play music is like, oh, just go to the studio, record, get mm -hmm. out, the song is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And then you get there and realize, you hear it, you're like, well, did that sound like that? Yeah. And you can't change it, you have to re-record again and re-record again. And imagine you're doing that to like 10 songs. If you know no day here with me, I cannot feel move if you know they move along with me. Without you, it be like say what turn upside down. I no go let like you, baby. I want you here with me. If you say I feel to change the story, where people don't talk about me for where you day. If you say I feel to change your mind, oh. oh Go quickly carry you I can go to your town So baby please Anything where I'm tell you about me I beg you, beg you Don't listen on my own Make you do Baby please Anything where I don't tell you about me I do beg you Make you know you're the most Make I be your lover Make I be your lover Make I be your lover 
Professionally, mm -hmm. I would say in um, 2017. Nice. Yeah. And how's that been for you? The journey, the industry? It hasn't it. been easy, but we thank God. Okay, so my question would be um, when a lot of emerging artists get out there, you know, they just feel like uh, I have a banger, it's gonna, you have a very good song, but in as much as it's good, it doesn't mean that it's going to be sellable. So, what are the, some of the challenges and what are the things that you feel should be in place to give people like you a chance with good songs without connections or stuff like that? I don't know about your connection, I'm just saying generally. <laughs> so, without connection and stuff to actually get into the industry without a lot of others. Mm. Um, basically, the way things are in our country, as we all know, you work mm -hmm. on yourself, you work on your music, you pay for everything, mm -hmm. and then when you get to a certain point, that's when people want to come in and say, okay, mm -hmm. we're ready to invest. Mm -hmm. So that's what we basically do. Mm. You know, just it's our work. work it's our work, yeah. So now you're working on yourself <laughs> yeah, with hopes myself. that you'll be signed yeah. and by. So if if you have the opportunity to choose the record label mm. in Speak Nigeria, it to or maybe globally to say this is the platform I want to be part of or signed on that, who would you choose or what platform would you choose? I use who because there's always one face pushing mm. it, but who would that be? Um, I would still go for Don Jazzy, maybe. Mm. maybe. Why Don Jazzy? Mm. Uh, because I've seen most of the artists they had worked with and they've been successful. Mm. And then he knows so much about music. You run away from me, yeah. I don't they pop, now you won't come back. Don't come back, don't come back. As you don't they hear them say, I don't they get money, yeah. When you left me, girl, I lose focus. But I get plan for my own future. I can't stand, walk kind I know they sleep. About her, I be player with no jersey. You be the only fish me I want to cook up. If I'm smart, now see you don't fuck up. Follow my mango, can you follow my mango? Get me, go the mommy, yo. Cause I love you, wanna get me. Get me, me now, now only you wanna ride me. me. Go the mommy, yo. Because I love you, oh. And this is where we wrap up, guys. If you did enjoy today's episode like I did, then don't forget you can watch more of Tea Time on our YouTube channel, at Plus TV Africa. Also, catch the Tea Time crew live on Monday to Friday at 10.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. on JSTV Channel 408 across Africa. Once again, it's your favorite girl, Ife Omai. Thank you for watching. Bye.